kind of want Rhea Ripley in the WrestleMania match now. Hi, hey, hello, uh, welcome to a Market Down production. This is a guy named Danny fast forwards through Raw because it's three hours and three hours. It's three hours, guys. That's so long. Oh my god. So I fast forward through it. Uh, my name is Alan Abernaki, a defender of of the Gorgonites, and yeah, this I uh, watched a Monday Night uh, Globotech, uh, no, Monday Night Raw, uh, you know, and I, I sped through it at the speed of speed of light, you know, just just like me out in his pals. Anyway, uh, so yeah, and this was Raw. So uh, first uh, came a, a commando elitist himself, the WWE champion, uh, Bobathan Lashley. And he cut a whatever promo, an MVP cut a whatever promo, very low compared to his normal standard. It's just, does, it's just nothing, nothing of it. And then because there's an elimination chamber on Saturday, right? So Lashley, the champion, opens the show, cuts a promo. Guess what happens? I'll give you time. Did you guess? Final answers in. What is your guess? Oh my god, that is right. Everyone else that's in the fucking chamber match came out one at a time to interrupt him because of course, of course that's what happened. Seth Rollins came out, he was great because Seth Rollins is very entertaining now. He has found his groove. Right, Betsy? Yes. Right, Grayson, who's off camera? Yes. Right, Shiny Rydon? Yes. And then Riddle came out in his toga. Great stuff. I want more of him and Seth interacting, which I think we're going to get because I think that's the WrestleMania direction is RK Bro versus KO and Seth for the tag titles, and I'm cool with that. But then came out Austin Theory, and he was more on the Bobby Lashley end of the spectrum, and that's okay. That's okay, you know? But uh, anyway, he didn't say much of note. AJ Styles came out. He botched his lines. He clearly forgot his lines at one point, and he paused in the crowd. Thought he was going to say something epic the way he paused and then he just went back to, you know, what was clearly the middle of his promo. So he kind of fucked up. And then out came Lesnar, who did not cut any promo. He didn't say anything in the red. A little bit nice if they spoke to each other before this match, you know. But nope, he just, uh, he used Austin Theory as a coat rack. He put his hat and his little sweater on him. And that's great. I love that for Austin Theory. That's a great gimmick. Coat rack. Definitely run with it. See where it takes you way further than whatever the fuck you're doing now is. But, um, yeah. Then he just beat up the area real quick, and that was that. A whatever segment. Oh, man. And speaking of whatever, AJ Styles, who was going to be in the chamber match for the WWE Championship, took on Damian Priest for the United States Championship, uh, who was not in the chamber. Damian Priest, definitely a Gorgonite, but, you know, uh, this was a rematch from last week, and I'm sure it had its moments. I'm sure there were some great spots in this match, but it was a rematch, so fast forwarded right through it. But guess how it ended up? Give you some time as I pet a cat. An off screen cat. Oops, yeah. Anyway, did you guess? Uh, pencils down. What is your guess? Ooh, no, I'm, that, I'm so sorry. It actually did not end in a DQ. I know I misled you a little bit. I thought it would, but you know, it's definitely your second guess, which I'm only going to three seconds. Three, two, one. And that's right. It was a roll-up. It ended in a roll-up. Guy who was fighting for the WWE Championship on Saturday lost a guy who was not fighting for a set championship via roll-up. Why couldn't you just do this match a week from now? Whatever. Anyway, after that, out. It was a contract signing. Oh, by the way, this first hour had no commercials. I didn't realize that until like 45 minutes in. Uh, Becky Lynch and Lita had a contract signing. And Becky Lynch came out looking very disheveled and like a little, you know, uh, disconnected um, and disassociated and was cutting a promo. Like, don't, don't, don't do this, Lita. I'm not doing the accent, but don't do this, Lita. Like, uh, I, it's not fair. I shouldn't have to fight my heroes. You know, I've messed up this me. I have, I have to take out my idol. Don't do this. This is what the people want. They want us to be miserable. If, if we're miserable, they're happy. If we're happy, they're miserable. Like, don't give in to the power. And all Lita says is, hey, guys, 
should I fight Becky Lynch? And they were like, yeah, like, you should. So, you know, way to go, Lita. Way to just instantly, this felt like it needed more time. Like there was something good there and then just, it was rushed. But you know, man, look how much Becky Lynch is working to get this feud over and it has, it has worked. God, I wouldn't want someone with her charisma to carry fucking charisma vacuum Ronda Rousey to a WrestleMania feud. No, we're gonna trust that to a robot. This contract signing went way better than the one that's coming up on SmackDown. Which maybe you won't be able to tell because I highly edited it, but... Oh boy, did they fuck up. <sighs> so, there was a Gotham match. Because it's Elimination Chamber season. Because it's Wrestlemania season. Because it's Elimination Chamber season during Wrestlemania season. It is Gotham season. Because they always do that now. It's their specialty. They do it good. It, there's diminishing returns for sure. But they almost always are good now, so kudos. Uh, this one had the people from the Women's Chamber. Rhea Ripley started off with Nikki A.S.H., who she beat pretty easily because Nikki, what was the point of turning heel? What if uh, nothing's changed? You still lose all the time? So what was the point? Anyway, Liv comes out. Liv can't really afford a loss. She's lost way too much lately. But Rhea beats her because and Rhea should beat her. But this is maybe the problem with doing these gauntlet matches is that you're pinning all your fucking participants in it, like, you know? And then out comes Dewdrop, and you think, okay, Rhea beat two people, but now she's going to be tired, she'll lose to Dewdrop, who will ultimately lose to Bianca Belair. Cool. But that's not what happened. Rhea, after going back and forth in a lot of strength spots, beat Dewdrop, got the crowd to come off their feet a couple points during this, um, then Bianca comes out. And this is where this kind of fell apart for me, because... Bianca is clearly going to be the face going into the WrestleMania feud with Becky because she's clearly going to win the chamber. And why would the face come out sixth in the gauntlet match win to win the sixth spot in the elimination chamber so she gets the advantage there? Like, that shouldn't be... She's not even overcoming any odds. This is a fucking breeze for her. Like, she's breezing her way into the rumble. You know, and, like, Rhea got over as hell. Now I kind of want to see Rhea in that spot. Maybe they'll do a triple threat. That would be cool. I'm being for that. The other two matches are already singles matches. Might as well have some multi-people matches. You know? I don't know. Oh, Alexa Bliss is going to be the sixth participant because she had a couple therapy sessions. And, you know, she looks more and more normal each time and less like Fiend Bliss. Uh, and now she's cured, quote, unquote. But, oh yeah, she's going to be the sixth member. And that, that's cool. Oh man, there was a lot of also nothing on the show way earlier. The Dirty Dogs faced Street Profits. I have no idea why I fast forwarded to because who cares, you know? Uh, the Mysterials lost to the um, uh, Tag Champs Alpha Academy. The uh, Dana Brooke got embarrassed because they love embarrassing Dana Brooke and they were like, ah, uh, this is what you got for friend zone and me. And that, uh, that was whatever. Um, more importantly, though. Burger party all night long. Not really, like three segments. You know, Riddle's out there, he's having a good time. Uh, Apollo and his commander friend, uh, not commando elites, but his commander, what's his name, uh, were in Toga's partying with the faces because why? Why did he beat Biggie at WrestleMania last year? I know, right? You didn't even remember. You didn't even remember that he, he beat Biggie last year, but he did. What was the point of that? I know, shiny guy down. I fucking know. It was a waste. But what are you gonna do? So, yeah, you know, it was fine. Alpha Academy broke it up by the third one. Uh, it wasn't everything I hoped it would be, but it was still good. Oh man. Anyway, conspicuous by his absence was Randy Orton because he had a match with Seth Rollins. Uh, so he was not at the Toga party, which is kind of why it just didn't live up to my expectations. Same, like, dude, he, he didn't get participate in the scooter race he doesn't participate in the in the toga party like come on man this is the shit we want to see bro come on randy you're having fun you're enjoying it bro just just take a hit man before the show and you'll be open to all these silly ideas come on anyway fought seth rollins uh it was cool they put on a big time wrestlemania match because you know this episode was on sci-fi again so they tried to put on a big match for it and that's that's cool I didn't like that Orton had the visual, like, Wendy at the RKO, and Seth is going in the chamber match, and again, Randy's not in it. But he did ultimately win after some Alpha Academy shenanigans. Riddle came out, blah, blah, blah. Eh, not the best end into the show, but... 
Gauntlet match was was pretty cool. Shiny Rhydon, what, what would you give the show? Cool. Hmm. He said it was about as hit or miss as a horn drum. So, not the best. Oh, I'm sorry, Seth, because I, I said Seth Rollins over and over, and I didn't say uh, Seth freaking Rollins. Uh, and that's just, that's just because you're not... Uh, the original person with the free game in the middle of their name that I think of, uh, so that's why. It's because I'm Seto freaking Kaiba. I'll be honest with you, I'm not as funny as Danny.